Aloha. Welcome everyone to our 8 a.m. worship service here at Christ Lutheran Church in Mililani Town. And a special welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us live on Facebook or later in the week. Uh, it's a regular service. If there's anything as a regular service, I think we're going to nothing special to announce. So I uh, uh, invite you to stand as you are able and we will begin with the gathering song, Crown Him With Many Crowns. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This 
This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free. Pule, Kako, let us pray. God of wonder, your mysteries are astounding. The whole world cannot contain them. Give us knowledge where you see fit, and let us sit comfortably with that which we can never understand. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the word. Our first reading comes from Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. A reading from Acts. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer. So he does not open his mouth. In his humili humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is it to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But, Phil but Philip found himself at Azotus, and he was passing through the region. He proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm this morning is from Psalm 22, verses 25 to 31. We will read half verse upon half verse. 
From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. And let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord. Who rules over the nations. Indeed. All who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord. Whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn. Saying to them, the Lord has acted. The second reading comes from 1 John Verse 4, I'm sorry, 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 21. A reading from 1 John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but he, that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we, ought, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God if we love one another. God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts our fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not re reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please stand as you're able for the gospel acclamation and the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. You may be seated. I think I've said this before, but <clears throat> whenever we read something from the Gospel of John the last few years, or first, second, third John, Chaplain AJ, who is now a pastor in, in uh, West Palm Beach, would start tearing what was left of his military haircut out of his head, because he said, it just spins around and around and around, all this, uh, you know, and there's no big words, but trying to read those lessons is a challenge. So we'll pray for Pastor AJ today, won't we, uh, that he has gotten through his uh, uh, services. And I am just going to take one line out of that that I'll get to in a minute, and hopefully that will unpack everything else that you wish to reflect upon in these readings. I was going to talk about, or I was thinking I was going to talk about anti-Semitism and racism, uh, Islamophobia, and even uh, the growing Asian hate, talk about the protests and the pre police brutality and, and talk about wicked problems in those areas. But as I thought about that, I also thought there's an underlying question that we have to ask first. And that is this, very basic. Who is God? What God do we worship? How do we imagine or picture God? And a second question that goes with it, the problem of evil. Why is there evil in the world? The latter, what, the problem of evil, has probably not been well addressed for the last 300 years in Christianity. And the former, who is God, has not been really well addressed probably for, I'd say, 1,699 years. Not 1,700, but 1,699. Because 1,699 years ago, at the Council of Nicaea in 325 CE, the Nicene Creed, which we'll confess in a few minutes, was written at the command of the emperor, Constantine. He had come to the throne a few years earlier after at the Battle of the Milvian Bridge. I had to look all this up. In 312, he had had a vision the night before, and Christ had come to him and said, fight in my name. And so he had all of his soldiers, the morning of the, the battle, paint a cross on their shields. He won the battle against all expectations. He was not probably going to win, but he won. And so everybody said, it's a miracle. And in the intervening years, he made Christianity, along with all the other religions of the empire, legal for the first time. And then in 381, not too many years later, the emperor Theodosius I, banned all religions except Christianity in the empire. And it went then from sect or cult to the religion of the empire. And a few years later, and I didn't know this, but as we get ready for the Olympic Games this year in Paris, in the 390s, Theodosius banned the Olympic Games because they were held in honor of the ancient Greek gods. I can't, I can't remember, when did the uh, game start back up? It was just a hundred years or so ago, wasn't it? They were banned for centuries, I think. And it would happen in the 390s because they were not Christian enough for the emperor. So in those 300s, the fourth century, Christianity went from outlaw to the religion of empire, from Christianity to Christendom, the kingdom of Christ.
But for that to happen, something else had to change. And that was who God was. Christianity had to go from a God of long-suffering love to a God of power. From gracious God to Almighty Father. From a God of grace to a God of fear. And in spite of being outlawed, the Greek gods of power, Zeus, Hera, Ares, or in, or in Latin, Jupiter, Juno, and Mars, Athena, Minerva, Apollo, in spite of being outlawed, the attributes of those imperial gods were quickly adopted by Christianity and empire. And Father, Son, and Holy Spirit reflected more Jupiter, Juno, and Aries than anything else. They became gods of power. And the Christian god of the weak, the marginalized, and the oppressed vanished, quickly fell by the wayside. Christendom's god of power was born. And with it, the problem of evil. If God is all-powerful, omnipotent, if God is omniscient, all-knowing, if God is omnipresent, that is everywhere, why is there evil in the world? Why do bad things happen to good people? As a, as a, a little book by Rabbi Harold Kushner wrote several years back, why do bad things happen to good people? Why do babies die? Why is there cancer? Why do people have heart attacks? Why are there lynchings? Why is there abuse? Why do governors of South Dakota shoot their puppies? Did you see that one this week? Why are there world wars? Why the Holocaust? For those of you old enough to remember, why Vietnam? Why protests? Why genocide? So who is God? Who is the God we worship? Why is there evil in the world? And my answer, I think, is the biblical answer. Why are there noises in the background? That makes me wonder if there is a God, right? Yeah. The biblical answer to why there is evil in the world is simply this. I don't know. I don't know. And anyone who tells you they know is going to sell you some swampland in Florida. I don't know. But this I do know, tentatively, because it is of faith. The Greek gods of power, presence, knowing, are the gods of empire, control, and violence. You can try to dress them up as Christian, but in the end, the problem of evil defeats them. If God is all-powerful, why is there evil in the world? Scripture hints at it, which hints at it in, a, in our readings today. Our liturgy has lots of power language in it, and some days I want to write it all out. Just scratch it out and try again. But in the end, it's mere bloviating. I had to look that word up too, bloviating. That is speech that is pompous. Think about it. Think about it. For a brief time, there was a kingdom called Israel, high in the mountains, a small kingdom, David and Solomon, and then it split, and then it fell and disintegrated. The two kingdoms vanished. And there is this little God of Israel and Judah who they bloviated about. And that was it. And no one else in the world paid attention. The God of the Bible, when you read it, 
from stem to stern, when you read it, the God of the Bible is not all powerful, but all loving, all loving, a God of unconditional love, a God of long suffering, which is the definition of patience, love for a very wayward Israel and an arrogant Christianity. This God rescued a band of whiny slaves who were no people, who probably didn't really know each other in history, and rescued them from imperial Egypt. This God was one of thousands who was crucified. Thousands. The Romans just tacked everybody up if they didn't like them. And Jesus was one of many. He died on an imperial cross, a victim of the police state. And so, God is all loving, even unto death, for people who really don't count. And in that second reading is one of my favorite verses that I think I've, I've said in one way, shape, or form over and over. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent his son to be an atoning sacrifice for sin. Not to pay God or the devil off, but just to atone by loving us, just loving us, those of us who do not deserve it. I want to emphasize that verse because as you read it, Bobby, that's when the noise went by. We love because he first loved us. That's all through 1 John. That's all through the gospel of John. We love because he first loved us. The movement, in the Lutheran movement, the movement is always from God to us. We don't seek Jesus. Jesus seeks us. Always, every day, all the time. The mystery of evil, why satanic, satanic power runs amok in the world, putting everything we hold dear at risk, is never really explained in the Bible, nor in our tradition, nor in philosophy and reason. But what is clearly proclaimed is that we are not alone in our suffering. God, in the crucified Christ, suffers with us for a lifetime. That's what the three days were about. Good Friday, Holy Saturday, Easter Sunday. That's a lifetime in ancient Israel speak. Promising resurrection at the end of life. In our pain and in our suffering, we are not alone. Life, not death, but life is the final word. The word of God, Jesus with us. Who is God? God is the one who rescued Israel from Egypt and who raised the crucified Jesus after a lifetime from the dead. This I believe more than anything in my life, and this I proclaim to you. Amen. And I invite you to stand as you're able and let us sing the hymn of the day, My Faith Looks Up to Thee.
And so, as I mentioned earlier in the sermon, I now invite you to join with me in confessing our faith in the triune God, using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. This kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, with knowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we pray for the witness of the church, the wholeness of creation, and all who are in need. For ministries that nurture faith formation, for pastors, KT church teachers, and Bible study leaders, for those who are seeking, questioning, or curious, for seminarians, professors, and the newly baptized, a e kahaku, e for the beauty and health of the earth, for vineyards and orchards, mango groves and coral reefs. For rainforests and snow-capped peaks, for dormant volcanoes and steep-sided valleys, for oceans deep and rivers slow, a e kahaku. For spears to be to beat into pruning hooks, for harsh words to be reformed into loving speech, for civil discourse and listening ears, for justice and peace in every land especially Ukraine, Palestine, Israel, and the Sudan. E kahaku. E aloha mai. For homeless youth and rejected children, for isolated grandparents and lonely, lonely nursing home residents, for the shame, the slighted, and the disregarded members of our communities, for all the sick, especially all those whom we name in our hearts and whose names now we now speak aloud. For the houseless of Maui, for children dying of hunger and famine, Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, all those with long COVID, Bonnie, Darren, Dick, Ellen, Eric, Rose, Florentina, Gary, Geraldine, Hal, Naomi, Jean, Jim, Kathy, Kate, Mary, Michael, Patty, Richard, Russ, Star, and Steph. 
for your healing presence, e kahaku, e aloha mai. For all who live with post-traumatic stress disorder and postpartum depression, for all who struggle with eating disorders and anorexia, for all who suffer in silence, and all who suffer alone, e kahaku, e aloha mai. For those with birthdays this week, especially Linda K and Ji Chang, for those who are remembering their baptismal anniversaries, especially Kaimana, may their days be full of laughter and life and joy. E ka haku. E aloha mai. For the communion of saints in Waianae, known as Malohia Lutheran Church, and their pastor, Jazzy Bostock, may they be faithful witnesses to the God who first loved us. E ka haku. Aloha. In thanksgiving for Catherine of Sina, Bernard of Clairvaux, Johann Thaler, the mysterious, unknown German, and all the mystics and theologians who lived eternally with you, for those we mourn and those we would rather forget, for the kingdom on earth to be as it is in heaven. E ka haku. E aloha. We entrust all our prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them by the power of the Holy Spirit and the love of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It seems that they were all waiting for you to come up here and pray to fire up their, their motorcycles. Yeah. Well, in the midst of all that noise and prayer, Aloha Nui, Aoko. Oke aloha o kahaku, e mau anameako, a paoloa. Siblings in Christ, friends and neighbors, brothers and sisters, the peace of Christ be with you always. And you know whom you can hug and whom you can wave to. And you may be seated, and again, thank you, uh, all of you. Uh, the newsletter's coming out with pictures of people doing different things and saying thank you to everybody. So keep an eye out for the newsletter. And again, thank you for your support, your time, your talent, and your tithes. We're going to sing Come Let Us Eat, which is a communion song for the offering song. And Tom, would you lead us in that, please? stand as you're able. <clears throat> Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day, you shower us with blessings. 
As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Na makana akeakua, noka poe akeakua. The gifts of God for the people of God. Ekomomai, ekipomai. Come, all is ready, and you are welcome. <laughs> Thank you. 
And for those of you who are worshiping with us online, if at this time you have bread and wine at hand or something reasonably close, I invite you to take it up. And even if you have nothing at hand, you can commune with Jesus and with us here at Christ Lutheran Church by receiving these words in faith. The body of Christ is broken for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. And announcements. Again, uh, the regional gathering for uh, Hawaii's uh, for Pacific Synod, the uh, Hawaii Conference or Hukilau Conference is going to be uh, June 1st. And if you'd like to be a part of that, uh, you can sign up there and the details are in the announcements. We have updated directories. Thank you for uh, uh, telling us where you've gotten to here. Some of you got away from us and now we found you again. So good to have you back. And then um, the uh, IHS ministry is going to be Saturday, June 1st, about a month out, and we're looking forward to that. And then uh, the HUI sign-up is still back there. If you would like to uh, uh, check it out, we still have some slots available. Uh, note that we sort of eliminated the reader position uh, and, and put that back in with the assisting minister because it got a little confusing for folks, especially those folks at the second service. You guys are okay, but they got real confused. So we'll pray for them, okay? Yeah. And then, um, do, you, do you know if there's any graduates, anybody graduating from anything this year? If you do, let, let me or Shelby know at the office because we want to take a Sunday, you know, part of a Sunday worship service and honor them. I don't know if there's anybody out there, but we're just double checking right now. Uh, and then the men's prayer breakfast is going to be uh, June 6th uh, at the Rise and Shine Cafe at 730. And I want to also uh, emphasize uh, the Vacation Bible School that we're going to be doing jointly with Trinity Lutheran in Wahiwa. And um, uh, encourage you to, uh, if you know any kids who are what, 7th, uh, seventh, seventh, no, it's, well, if you know any kids, it, I think it runs from kindergarten through seventh grade and older. So um, if you know anyone, uh, sign them up or encourage them or have them talk to me. I think that's it for the announcements. Is there anything else we should mention? We have some other things going on but we're, but that I'm kind of excited about this summer and through the fall, but we'll uh, save those up as the plans become more concrete. But stay tuned for those. Please stand as you are able for the benediction and the sending song. And now may God, who brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Rise up, O saints of God. Jesus. 
Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. You are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Go in peace. The Spirit sends us forth to serve. Thanks be to God. <laughs>